Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a Dreissey Needle Fire Single Shot Pistol. And this is a very early single shot pistol as well. This is one of the very first guns that Dreissey was able to actually sell commercially. This is a model of 1835 single shot breech loading pistol. And it's the breech loading needle fire part that really makes this interesting. So normally when we think of handguns, or really any firearms from the 1830s, what we think of are your traditional muzzle loaders. This is only really a fairly short time after the percussion cap has actually been invented. So the idea of something more technologically advanced than just a flintlock, where you're really, where you're literally just hitting a rock against a piece of steel to make some sparks, and we've evolved, having evolved that into an actual chemical composition percussion cap is pretty substantial, Dreissey took this even a step farther and developed a pistol that you would actually load from the breech. Now we know Dreissey primarily for his uh, his Austrian or his Prussian uh, military rifle, the model of 1841, eventually made in a bunch of other variations through the 1860s, that in many ways revolutionized military combat by uh, introducing the concept of a practical breech loading military rifle that could be fired quite rapidly. Well, in addition to manufacturing those guns for the military, Dreissey was also trying to make a good living selling guns commercially. So let me show you what he did here. This really is a cool looking handgun too, in addition to being technologically fairly advanced for its day. Um, if we look on top we actually have a loading port. This is your loading lever. Uh, there is basically a, a tumbler inside here. And when it points up you can load a cartridge, and when it points forward you can fire a cartridge. So uh, to go through the loading process we're going to start back here. If you've seen a Dreissey military rifle you will recognize this system, because it's the same thing, just scaled down a little bit. We pull the whole block back, that is going to latch the striker over the sear with the trigger. Then to put spring tension on it we push this forward until this little flat spring latches. Let me show you that again. So you got this spring right here. This is a long flat spring with a little ledge on the end, and we're going to hook this back under the receiver. And what we've done is put spring tension on our firing pin, which is really a needle here. Now I skipped a step. Um, before you actually cock it you bring it back to here, and then you have opened up the lever. So there's a little notch there that actually captures this lever, so that when the thing's forward the lever can't open. When it's uncocked like that we can rotate this 180 degrees down, and that opens up our chamber. So you can see that there. Uh, what you can't see here is that on the bottom surface here there is actually a little teeny hole, and that is for the firing needle. So when you have this open, like so, you would insert a paper cartridge that's going to have a bullet in the top, uh, powder, six grams or six grains of powder, which is a pretty wimpy little charge, uh, and then a percussion cap type of primer in the base of the bullet, just like one of the Dreissey military rifles. So you stuff that in the top, uh, bullet facing up, powder facing down, and then you rotate it so it goes in line with the barrel. And once it's there then you can go ahead and cock that, and when you pull the trigger the needle drops forward, punctures into the paper cartridge, actually right in here, and fires the bullet down the barrel. Now I can actually, if I decock this and pull the trigger, I can pull this whole assembly out of the gun. So you can see the needle there. Unfortunately, although not uncommonly, uh, the actual needle part of this has broken off. So we don't have the, the pointy bit. But what I can do is unscrew the needle here. These threads are really quite worn. But uh, as with the Dreissey rifles, the needle uh, wears fairly quickly because it's actually inside the burning cartridge every time you fire. And so this was made very easy to replace. You just unscrew this and you can take it out. Then you can see we have a ledge right here, and that's what the trigger actually hooks up against. So when we pull this back, that is locking against that lug right there. That's the sear. When you pull the trigger it drops. So what we're doing in the bolt is compressing this back on its spring. When you pull the trigger this center 
uh, cylinder is released and the whole thing snaps forward with the needle in it and fires the cartridge. Go ahead and put that back in, thread it in there. There you go, you can see the needle sticks forward there. Once you fire, the whole thing is then ready to half cock, open, reload, close, finish cocking, and fire a second time. So it really is a, uh, a nice high rate of fire pistol for as early as the 1830s. There are a couple bits that we can take a look at still. We have a very tiny little rear sight there, and a matching front sight out there, a full octagon barrel. There are markings on the receiver. It's interesting that this one has a stock that's a little bit higher than on others that I've seen. I can tell you what that says under there is caliber 0.34 inch, and the inch marks actually indicate Zoll, uh, which was a German unit of measurement at this time that was about the same as an inch, uh, but varied a little. Um, this measures out with my bore gauge at approximately 35 caliber. Uh, and then it says six gran pulv, which means six grains of black powder. So it's these guns, along with Dreyse's other commercial guns, were actually marked with the recommended powder charge. There is also a serial number out on the barrel. I don't know exactly what to make of this serial number. I'm not sure if uh, that is all of Dreyse's guns numbered sequentially. I suspect it is. I don't think that it is exclusively Model 1835 pistols. Um, these guns were manufactured for many years, and well, he made a lot of them. I don't think he made that many of them. I think this is all of Dreyse's guns as a single serial number range. Nothing to show you on the other side of the gun, just barrel the opposite side of this spindle. I guess we can show you that rotating. This thing goes all the way through the whole receiver, and that acts as the, uh, the seal to prevent gas from escaping when you fire. And a nice checkered grip, secondary finger rest there on the trigger guard, and a nice cap on the end of the butt. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot more information on this specific model to give you guys. Um, it's hard to find good information written about Dreyse. There is a recent book published uh, by the A.R. West brothers out of the UK about Dreyse's military rifles, and there's some stuff written in German, but there's not really much of a good resource in English for Dreyse handguns. So um, if any of you have a good reference in German, I'm always looking for one of those, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to know more about Rock Island, take a look in the description text. You'll find a link to their YouTube channel and also their Instagram feed down there. Thanks for watching.